Hello, Answers Now, friends and family. I am Adam Dreyfus, uh, Chief Science Officer and co-founder of Answers Now, and your host on these weekly parent support universities. Um, what we are doing here during the pandemic is we're trying to demystify all of those terms and clinical uh, terms that you hear uh, as you sit in IP meetings, as you get assessments, because um, the whole goal of Answers Now is to reduce the barrier of entry uh, to all of this information to parents and caregivers. It's just ridiculous here in 2020 that parents and caregivers are so stressed out, so overwhelmed, um, and really so isolated uh, when it comes to caring for their child uh, who is uh, diagnosed, or adults who's diagnosed uh, with autism. Um, if you just kind of get online and uh, type away, uh, they would have you think that uh, we don't know what we're doing, and there's not a whole lot of stuff, and everything's new, and we're not sure what causes it. Um, and that's true. We don't know what causes autism, but we absolutely do know how to educate um, individuals uh, diagnosed with autism. Um, we've got 30 years, 40 years or so of really great research, hundreds and hundreds of interventions. And so uh, about 10 years ago, eight years ago, uh, a couple of universities sort of hit pause on all the noise. And I was like, well, listen, what, what do we just know? What do we just know that we can tell people works? Right. There's always going to be new stuff. There's a lot of new research coming in, but we can just say here, this is a box of stuff that just works today. We know it works. This is how it works. <clears throat> and so they um, identified uh, about 25 evidence based practices. Uh, and that's just a fancy way of saying this works. So here at Answers Now, um, I am walking through all of those evidence based practices uh, on a week by week basis and just unpack them a little bit, explaining what they mean, um, giving you some tips on uh, how they might work. Um, uh, and we're on our 16th one today. It's hard to believe that it's been uh, 16 weeks. Um, we like to give credit where credit is due. Um, all of this stuff was put together by the National Professional Development Center. Um, and what they did is they built these AFFIRM modules. Uh, and you can find them here at this website, afirm.fpg.unc.edu. Uh, and each module takes, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours to complete. They're free. Um, you can do them on your own time. Um, they probably want to, if you have no experience with them, um, be talking to somebody who has a little bit more experience because they're still pretty technical, but they're, they're about as good as it gets. Um, it's like a little uh, how to help somebody with uh, autism uh, university. And so they're thus Parent Support University. Um, you can find out more about us at getanswersnow.com. Um, we are also a downloadable app. You can go into your Apple Store or your Google Play Store and type in um answers now <laughs> my little whiteboards um so we you can find out more about us at getanswersnow.com um or go into your uh google play store and just type in uh answers now um don't put in a space it confuses the system for some reason so we've gone over all kinds of evidence-based practices so far and today's is gonna um uh um mirror in a lot of ways, one that we've done, uh, visual schedules. Um, I know that the PEX folks will get upset at me for saying that. Um, PEX is not a visual schedule. <coughs> PEX, uh, when I keep mentioning it, is P-E-C-S, um, Picture Exchange Communication System. I don't know why I peek out from behind there. Like, I don't know what's written on that. Uh, I wrote it. I know what it says. Um, I just want to make sure you can see it. That's, that's, that's the goal here. Um, so Picture Exchange Communication System. This was developed by um, Lori Frost and Andy Bondi. Um, and if you are interested, they are prolific presenters. Uh, so uh, you should go to pexusa.com. If you want to <clears throat> find out more information about them, they've got tons and tons and tons of free information on PEX. Um, uh, as well as their schedule. Um, it's a, uh, a wonderful thing. Uh, I've seen, I've been to, I probably have a, half a dozen of them. Um, and it's always great to see parents there because it's hugely useful because um, the parents' main concern, especially if communication is really impacted by their children, is I don't know what they want, right? They're sitting on the floor, they're crying, they're screaming. Do they want a cookie? Do they want uh, a, a notepad? Do they want uh, me to play with them? I, I have no idea. Um, and so there's a lot of misconceptions about PECS. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, people think that it's just a picture system. Uh, and if you hear uh, Dr. Bondi present, um, he is really, really clear. It is a communication system. It's not just uh, pictures where the kid gets to pick Skittles. Um, there's six phases to PECS. Uh, that's why it's uh, highly recommended that if you decide to implement PECS or, frankly, if somebody's implementing PECS 
um, with your child. Like they said, oh, hey, I'm, I think uh, your child uh, uh, can use uh, some pecs and they explain it to you and they tell you what you're gonna, they're gonna do. Um, you should ask, do you have training in this? Because most people just do phase one of pecs. Phase one of pecs is uh, I got a picture of something um, and then I exchange it for the thing that I want. And usually you start out with food or some really highly preferred item. So like their teddy bear, you have their teddy bear on a table, they reach for it, you hand them the card that has a picture of a teddy bear on it. Um, they're supposed to hand it to you, then you give them the teddy bear. It takes a little while for kids to learn this, but not all that long. Like, all right, I just have to, there's a little interruption in me getting exactly what I want, which is a lot of what uh, ABA does is we interrupt their normal routines and try to build language and social skills in there. Um, and that's really what it is. So uh, what they're taught to do is, hey, if I want my bear, um, a muffin, eggs, uh, some time with mom, whatever, I hand over the picture and I get it. And that's just, that's pretty, that's kind of the prerequisite skill for the rest of it. But a lot of folks just stop on that. They're like, oh, this is great. Look, he'll, no, I know what he wants. Um, sort of in phase one. Uh, phase two is generalizing, and that's mostly you're just kind of wandering around the world. So, um, you know, if they're asking for a glass of water, you want to do that near a sink. Uh, if they're requesting some kind of food item, it's probably best to do that in the kitchen because that's where most of the food is. If uh, they're requesting to splash in the bath, you want to be standing next to the bath if you can because uh, context is huge, right? We spend a lot of time, and you probably see it a lot when the folks come into your house to work with your kids, is they're sitting at a table doing a lot of flashcards. Um, and that's really efficient, right? You can get through a lot of information that way, but it generally lacks context, <laughs> right? Like, um, yeah, here's a picture of a horse and you're sitting at a table in a room. Um, picture of a horse at a farm uh, would, be, uh, would make a, a, a lot more sense um, because uh, you can't really underestimate the power of context to cue us into uh, the, the, the meaning of language and why we're using certain words in certain situations. Um, and then phase three, and yeah, you see me glancing down to my right. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my cheat notes. Uh, I've, ta I've taken a bunch of times, but I don't remember all the names all in order. Um, is uh, discrimination. So you go from one card to several cards. So, um, uh, you know, you see these in kind of notebooks sometimes that the kids carry that have lots of text cards in them. Um, you want them to be able to discriminate, to select, you know, a banana card as opposed to a uh, a PlayStation card if they want a banana. Um, so that's a simple discrimination. You, uh, we call it kind of adding the field size. Field is like how many things they have uh, in front of them from one to two to three. To Some of these notebooks have hundreds of things and the kids' the discriminations are uh, incredible. Uh, then you start working on sentence structure, usually with a I want something. So um, we call that a man, a request of some kind. So you're trying to expand their language out a little bit. Um, uh, and uh, uh, build out sentences. So instead of just one word uh, peck responses, you're getting multiple word uh, peck responses. Uh, phase five is uh, you uh, see if they can kind of answer questions. Um, and again, you're just expanding functional language out. Um, and then phase six is commenting, right? You're, uh, you're having them uh, comment on things. So they're not necessarily responding. They're not just answering a question. They're trying to sort of use language to... Uh, make comments about uh, uh, the world. Super important point here. The point of PECS is to result in verbal, like vocal talking communication. Most kids, well, most, probably not the best word. Um, quite a few kids that are nonverbal end up talking under, um, if they run, if they happen to be fortunate enough to get a, a, a really good ABA therapist, a really good speech therapist, a, a even really good occupational and physical therapists that understand the power of context and how to promote language using uh, motivation. Um, and so one of the theories behind why kids uh, 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 don't speak uh, is they don't see the function of language. They don't make that connection like babies um, and toddlers do. They make that connection. Oh, I make a sound, something happens, right? Mom shows up. I make this sound, mom shows up with a bottle. I make this sound, mom shows up with my binky. Um, and so you are super motivated to learn as much language as possible because it gets your needs met and it gets your needs met in ever increasing um, levels of specificity. So for example, I pull up to a Starbucks and they say, what can I get for you, sir? And I say, coffee. And I pull around and they give me a coffee. But what I wanted 
was a double frothy latte with vanilla and non-fat milk. But I, don't, I didn't have those words. The only word I had was coffee. So I get my coffee, and I'm like, that's, that's not what I wanted. Um, and so the, what language does was what increasing your language from one word to 10 words to 20 words is lets you refine uh, exactly what it is that you want. So you get exactly what you want. Um, you go into a restaurant, and you say, food. And they bring you a plate of mashed potatoes, and you don't like mashed potatoes. But you say, "Oh no, I'd like uh, I'd like the steak, medium rare with the Bernays sauce. Um, I don't want the asparagus because I don't like asparagus very much. Can I get broccoli with that? Oh, perfect. Um, and uh, for dessert, so it, you see what I'm talking about? Expanding language um, is always uh, the key. So PEX, even though it is picture exchange communication, um, it is done within the context of we want to get this kid talking. Why? Most people talk. Right? You want to give somebody the tool that most people have access to with the least amount of training. Um, this is why sometimes people um, are resistant to teach sign language because they're like, not many people teach no sign language. So if you walk up to someone and you know, you're doing sign language and they don't know it, it's not functional communication. It's not serving a function for you. Um, I disagree wholeheartedly. Uh, if uh, sign language is what uh, they are... Um, uh, uh, running with, then you run with uh, sign language. Um, I wouldn't do what's called the multimodal approach if I could help it, where you're teaching like sign language and packs and vocal stuff all at the same time. Um, it's better to pick one and focus on it for a little while. Um, uh, I'm not crazy opposed to the multimodal approach. Um, it's just uh, I think it uh, if someone's having trouble with something um, and you're trying to get them to do it. Uh, like, hey, I'm trying to teach my daughter how to ride a bike and she's struggling with that. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a great idea to say, let's try it to do a unicycle and a bike and a pogo stick and see which one works um, and which one works better. Um, so six phases, very important. Pecs, hugely, hugely useful. Um, don't give up on it if you're having trouble with it. Um, if you do have somebody working with you, uh, that is using the picture exchange communication system, ask them how much training they've got. Um, it is a fairly uh, complex uh, serv uh, instructional um, delivery. Uh, there are six phases. There's very structured ways to go about doing each phase. Um, there's a lot of training that goes into when do I go from phase one to phase two, phase two to phase three, and so forth. How do you troubleshoot if you're having uh, problems? Um, so definitely, and I de also want to mention, like I showed up, Showed this in this Toby. What does that mean? Um, that's kind of another kind of uh, uh, um, pex. Um, it uh, uh, it's uh, usually it's a, like a what it looks like. Uh, Toby is um, uh, they try to make it look exactly like the thing. So a pex card is literally a card with a picture on it. Uh, but a Toby is like looks like a banana. It's like a banana cutout. Basically, it's like a. Um, a PEX card cut out. But you might hear that sometimes. People are like, oh, did you try Toby? I'm like, Toby? What's Toby? Um, uh, and uh, so it's, a, it's another form of visual uh, card. Um, so definitely credit where credit is due. Lori Frost and Andy Bondi invented PEX. You definitely want to go to PEXUSA.com to check it out because they got free downloads, free resources, especially um, right now. They've got stuff around the pandemic, around washing hands. Uh, around wearing a mask because a lot of these kids are like, what is going on? Um, and one of the absolute strengths of um, most kids on the spectrum and adults is they have very strong visual skills. That's why they tend to be really good at matching and a lot of visual discrimination. And so PEX, Picture Exchange Communication System, is right up their alley. I um, want to remind you, I'm Adam Dreyfus. I'm the Chief Science Officer of Answers Now. What is Answers Now? Answers Now is a mobile uh, app. Um, you download on your phone and it connects you directly to a clinician. Um, so you get to sign up and you're basically it's just a subscription to your own clinician. Um, we're going to be taking insurance soon. So definitely check us out at getanswersnow.com. I got my cards here, getanswersnow.com. Um, and you can uh, download us off of the App Store for free. We've got all kinds of blog stuff. We've got communities. We've got uh, a lot of ways that you can interact with us. Uh, the main way, though, being is that you can video chat, talk to your own board-certified uh, behavior analyst. You can either do that as a one-off, like just sign up and say, hey, I'm, you know, I want a 20-minute conversation because I have some questions about a specific thing. Um, or our, our kind of our main offering is um, an extended um, uh, month-by-month subscription 
um, kind of like, uh, you know, um, uh, all the doc in a boxes um, where you can uh, call your doctor whenever. Uh, same thing. You can uh, connect uh, your BCBA. Even if you've got ABA stuff, uh, a lot of our folks um, have ABA services, but the parents kind of want their own, you know, seven day a week access to somebody. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you and your family are doing well in these very loopy times. Um, I'm Adam Dreyfus. Uh, check us out at getanswersnow.com and have a great day.